Hello and welcome to what is um, a bit of a walkthrough of the new features that have come in with um, Omnisphere 2.6 and that was dropped earlier this week and the most significant changes were to the sequencer section and as you know I'm a big fan of the uh, sequencer on Omnisphere and I think the best thing to do is um, break this down into a couple of videos. The first one will be to do with the new features that are there, um, new settings that you can play with, and then we'll dig a bit deeper into well, how does that change the sound. So first of all, the layout, as you can tell, is changed slightly. It's, it's more functions to go at. Uh, first of all, we've got the arpeggiator presets. If we just can start it first of all, they've actually um, broken these down. It used to be one big block list, if you remember. They've now broken these down into uh, arps, bass lines, chordal combos, effects, sequences. All these are actually new, uh, than weren't there originally. And if you look at I can see version 1 presets, they've kept those and they kept them separate which is a good thing because then at least you know what's new, what's old. The other ones below are the ones I've collected over time um, so we won't go into those. The swing, the length and the speed are exactly the same, no changes there, the same with the uh, the velocity ratio between the arpeggiator and, uh, and the keys. What we do have is uh, the same legato, song position and note and we have the same settings for um, the, the type of sequencer, whether it's uh, half note, quarter note, eighth notes, sixteenth notes. Default is always sixteenth. I'll come back to that one in a minute. Um, you've got one octave, two octave, three octave, four octave. Now you've got a two octave alternate, three octave alternate, and four octave alternate. So, just to give you an idea what the difference is. Uh, let's just. Oh, I don't want to do that. Just want to go into A. Stick a filter on there. Do a bit of an eighth note. And I won't do anything fancy. So that's. Stop for a bit. So. That there is the note, uh, the sequence are going through two octaves. That goes through three octaves. And that goes through a four octave range. Now, when we go to these two octave alternates, so that goes back on itself. So that's what the, these alternate uh, settings do. Uh, we have a loop, so it constantly loops, which we've had there, and a new one called Chaos, which, as you can see from the way the notes are flashing, is completely random. Just set that to one octave. So that's what chaos does. So it's like a random uh, function. Uh, then we have once, which is basically what it says on the tin, which is once through. It doesn't loop. Then we come to the new bits, and uh, we've got uh, the sequence of playing as a chord. Need to put that on loop. So, so that basically allows you to play the arpeggiators chords. So what I'm doing there is just uh, C major, F major, G major. 
C major. Uh, what we've got next? Usual. Just our page eight all. And down sort of starts on the high note, goes to the low note of what you've pressed. All I'm doing is I'm pressing um, an octaves of C. random whether it goes up and down so basically it will just change whatever no, random uh, whether it goes down or up as played playing octaves that won't sort of like come across so what I'll do is play a C minor chord so if we play C E flat cycle it in that motion but if I play C G E C it will play the C G E flat C repeat so play each one four times before as in going up four times, four down. Got a join mode. Spread. Now, that really only works when you put it in an oct two octaves. It doesn't really come across on uh, one octave. And it spreads them out between the two octaves then, where it goes up or down. Stairs and up. Stairs down. Stairs up and down. And stairs down and up. I'll come back to that in a minute because there's a fantastic mode that they've added uh, so you don't have to keep the keys pressed called latch. If you just hold the, what you want to play down and click latch and let go of the keyboard. It'll just keep playing until you select like latch. Now, if we just pop on over to, uh, let's get this in a shot. Yeah, we're still on a Brexit here, so that's going to be on this video for all eternity. But if we need port to spectrosonics.net and just get to a atmosphere 2.6. Uh, Learn more about the project. If we go into this page, it actually gives you a MIDI keyboard set out of what the. Uh, if we go, where are we? I think it's pattern program, is it? Nope, that's not it. We don't want to go there just yet. No nope, patterns, that's the one we want. So here we go. We can see this okay that's this breaks down what i've just been playing so chord so all the notes held in a chord we trigger at the same time so you can get nice and trance type stuff going there up all notes will be held in ascending arpeggio down to go down in an arpeggio up and down the alternate up and down plus it's similar to up and down but <laughs> your highest note gets repeated first down and up it's as it says on the turn it goes down then back up again down and up plus so the your lowest note gets repeated twice. Random, it just play the notes in a random order. As played is what I demonstrated on the C minor chord. Uh, if you play C, E flat, G, C, it will play in that order. If you play C, G, E flat, C, then it'll play in that order instead. So repeat twice, every note is repeated twice in ascending order, four times in ascending order. Join, this is the one where it creates a pattern which starts with the lowest note and the highest note, 
alternate progressively inward onto the, the middle. Um, so you'd have to hold a four note chord, chord to that or as they've done here a uh, six note chord to actually fully appreciate the thing so if we just go to uh, back to the join setting let's move that out of the way and we go to the join setting here so six six notes uh, let's go That's what the what it will do. Uh, then we get spread creates a pattern that we, so it, it does the opposite of join. So it works from the outs from the inside out. Join and spread. So that will start on the outside, come on into the inside, and then spread back out on the note. So you, if you've got a um, C major chord C E G C it would start on the C notes, come to G and the E and then back to the C notes. Spread and join. Uh, and the pattern continues with the same notes and the join pattern. So that's we'll start from the inside. So we'll start off with the taking the C major chord again. We'll start off with the E and the G, go to the C and then back in again. Uh, I won't go through all of them because uh, you can read them for yourselves if you just go over to the Spectrosonics website. But I just thought I'd just go through that. So we'll close that for now. So that's a basic overview of the features you've got there. Uh, one last cool feature, which um, we'll go into more detail later, is this capture mode, which allows you to capture. It captures the actual notes played as a MIDI. So it, if you have, it's probably more useful if you use random, if you come up with something that's, you think, hey, that's good. Uh, it would be great on a full sequence. The problem with random is it's random, so you may never ever get that particular pattern f without sitting there for five, ten minutes uh, ever again. So what you could do is set the capture going, get it to play, and drag it and drop it into your door, uh, Cubase, Sonar, or Logic, whichever you use, and edit it from there. But we'll have a go at that later. So that's just a quick look around the new features of the sequencer and um, I'll put another tutorial up uh, in, a, in a little while that will uh, go through actually programming the sequence and the new the additional new features because there's quite a few uh, there's an easier way to do ratchets uh, and we'll go into that in more detail as well so I hope you enjoy this br brief overview of the new feature of the sequencer in Sonosphere 2.6 um, and look, and if you want to know about when the next video goes up, click the bell in the, in the top corner there, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next time.